George Lemon. The world knows him as Metal Luck. He joined the world-famous Harlem Globetrotters in 1955. The naysayers said no one could ever replace Goose Tatum. They were wrong. For the next 24 years, he was the clown prince of basketball. Wilt Chamberlain called him the greatest player of all time. When he left the Globetrotters in 1979, his career was only beginning. He would appear in television sitcoms. Movies. He even recorded his own album. He started his own ministry, and he's highly sought after worldwide as a public speaker. And in 2003, he was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. No man has ever made more people happy or entertained more people in the sport of basketball. And you did it with a style and a grace that made all of us proud. And so tonight, by virtue of the vote of the Honors Committee and by the power vested in the Board of Trustees, it's my privilege to induct you as a contributor into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame with all rights and privileges. Congratulations. Thank you. One of uh, a young, young men in my, one of my basketball camps, he came up to me one day and said, Mr. Meadowlock, I said, yeah. He said, you got it going on. <laughs> Tonight, we have it going on. Thank you so much. God bless you. We are honored to have on your primetime sports today the legendary Metal Lark Lemon. Thank you so much for coming on with us. You are in town for a lot of different reasons here in Paragould. A lot of different fundraisers, a lot of different events. Let's talk about those, first of all. You, uh, uh, you were at the Treasure House uh, right. on Saturday, this past Saturday, uh, for a meet and greet promoting the upcoming events. And one of those was this past Monday night in Piggott uh, for the, uh, there's, there's a uh, fundraiser down there that you had for a, a banquet and the ministry that's up in Piggott? Yeah, that is correct. Uh, we, have, we have friends all over the state. And uh, when all of this came together, it just popped up all at one time. And uh, a lot of people had to scramble to put everything in, in, into place. And, uh, you know, so all of the week we've been just working at this. And uh, the basketball game that's coming up on Saturday, it, it's going to be something that's going to be special. We're going to raise a lot of money, hopefully, for a lot of good people out there, a lot of young people who are in need, uh, who uh, have gotten in, gotten themselves into a few situations. And, uh, you know, and uh, the group that we have here is going to help, help them get out of it as much as possible. We're doing this interview from uh, Lifehouse Ministries here in Paragould and Center, Centers for Fathers and Families, and they are the beneficiary of this event. And that is, that, that's correct. And uh, where we are now taping this, you know, you, they have all kinds of things, and I didn't realize that this was uh, as large as it is. And it's uh, it, it just we have everything in here that the young young people need, especially the young girls who happen to get pregnant. And, uh, 
they don't know what to do and uh, they can come to this uh, this organization and these people have really really helped them out a great deal they got everything here for babies and they got uh, um, I don't know what soldiers they have here but it's a whole bunch of stuff and a lot of information on what the young ladies young men should be able to do with their lives you know when they uh, when the young lady gets pregnant young teenager gets pregnant they can they can come to this organization and uh, they will really put everything into motion for them. So the basketball game, it's a benefit basketball game, you and the Harlem All-Stars. That is Not correct. to be confused with the Harlem Globetrotters. This is Thank your you. team. Thank you. Yeah, this is Meadowlock Lemon Harlem All-Stars. And we do fundraisers like this all over the, all over the country. And uh, hopefully we're going to be all over the world. Uh, we're working on getting into the Orient right now. And I think that's going to that's gonna come up pretty soon. Um, I'll be with uh, some of the retired NBA players. Uh, we go to Calvin Murphy and and hopefully. Uh, and these are folks that are going to be here in Paragould on Saturday afternoon. Well, not uh, not NBA players, but the, the players that we have with the, the Harlem All-Stars. You know, we have some really, really good, talented People we in fact, have. I think we have a list of those players. Uh, well, those I think the players that's going to play against us. These are the local players. Yeah, I see. And, and a lot of those players are. I can't. I have my glasses. Well, I don't gonna, have my glasses. I've got it off camera here, but I want to. I want to read this. Uh, Jason Noel, the pastor at Eastside Baptist Church, and Kevin Edgar, the pastor at the First Church of God, and yes. David Moat, the pastor at Providence Baptist Church. I think every pastor from every church in Paragould is going to be there. Hopefully, pastor Pat yeah. Graham, <laughs> Southside Community Church. The list goes on and on. We may be here all day calling out this list. Um, who's going to play on your team? Do you know oh, right yeah, off the top yeah. of your head? Oh, yeah. We have uh, uh, Pee Wee Harrison. Uh, oh, wow. He's been with me for quite some time. And uh, a couple of other players that we have coming in from uh, our players come from all over the country. Uh, a couple of players going to come in from um, Omaha, Nebraska, um, who plays with us. Uh, several players uh, from Portland, Oregon, and uh, we're just going to come in and put on a show, and it's going to be a fun time uh, playing against some of the pastors and some of the other dignitaries from out of the area. And uh, we're just going to have a good time, and uh, hopefully we're going to raise uh, a lot of money for this uh, organization to help our young people out. That's at Paragould High School, Saturday afternoon. Tip time is, it's actually Saturday night, isn't it? It's like yes, 6 o'clock Saturday yeah. night. Yeah, I think the doors open at 5, 5 p.m., and uh, you need to get there in time so you make sure you get a good seat. And tickets are $15 each. That's a general admission ticket. And I believe you can also buy those in advance either at Lifehouse Ministries or at Paragould High School, or you can get them at the gate. Yes. Uh, if you're going to come at the gate, you better come early. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, the Paragould Gymnasium. Folks around here know it's not the, great, it's not the biggest gymnasium in the world so it fills up pretty quick especially if you've been there for a green county tech paragool game you know how quickly that gymnasium fills up uh it's going to be a fun time and that's saturday night at six o'clock you and the harlem all-stars against our local celebrities that is correct and this is not i mean you do this all over the place yes we do we you do. travel the country and in some cases the world raising money for various different charities in exactly this way, putting on basketball games with your all-stars. Yeah, you know, um, uh, this is the greatest country in the world, and uh, I'm finding out that uh, a lot of uh, high schools now, the young people are going to have to pay to play. I never heard of that before. So in cases like that, we do come in and we can raise quite a bit of money to, to help the athletic program out uh, any other organizations in the schools that uh, that need funding, you know, they can raise as much as money as they would like, up to maybe a hundred thousand dollars, depends on the facility and uh, and how hard the young people want to work to bring to sell the tickets. Once they sell the tickets, everything is home free. And it's it's uh, uh, and you do that countrywide and. And you've taken it across uh, the ocean into Europe in, in some cases? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We're planning We're planning to go to Europe, uh, hopefully, maybe next year. Uh, the Orient, 
next year also because this this year is coming to a close pretty quickly um but uh we're available you know and i speak all over the country um i'm also an ordained minister so uh i preach in a lot of churches where around this area here uh Pyrgal, we i'll be speaking in about but six or seven churches and uh, last night i was in the church yesterday morning i was in church so uh um and you do that everywhere you go oh yes yes everywhere well i'm on the road quite a bit of of my time uh, about 50 percent of the time i'm on the road that's amazing that's amazing we're really glad to have you in paragool we've got a lot more coming up we're going to take a, a quick break and we're going to have a lot more with metal arc lemon when we come back on your primetime sports.com you get big time savings Retirement? It's never looked so good. Welcome to Chateau on the Ridge Assisted Living in Paragould, Arkansas. Say hello to fine dining and down-home living, where around-the-clock security and peace of mind are always at your fingertips. And front row seats to the best shows? They're included. We call it Chateau on the Ridge. You can call it home. Call or visit today to get the whole scoop. Make the switch now to no fee banking. First National Bank provides me with totally free checking, and as a business owner, that helps keep my customers satisfied. At First National, there are no fees and no hassles. Express yourself by choosing a debit card that fits your personality. I switched my bank to First National because of no monthly debit card fees. Are you ready to switch? First National Bank, the working bank for working people. Member FDIC. Let us show you how easy switching can be. Do you need insurance? If the answer is yes, let Chris Robinson and his staff at Chris Robinson's Insurance Agency handle your needs. Whether it's auto, life, business, or planning for your retirement, Chris Robinson's Insurance Agency is ready to serve you and your family. Come by Chris Robinson Insurance Agency, 1211 West Court Street in Paragould. <laughs> hey, team, split up and scram. I hold them off. Wait, what? This. This is the first time in my career I've ever interviewed someone that was a cartoon character. <laughs> you were, had your own, the Harlem Globetrotters had their own cartoon back in the 70s, and, and uh, I watched it when I was a little kid. Uh, and then we had another live uh, situation. Uh, comedy called the popcorn machine also see i so, didn't even know about that one that's yeah, yeah so the popcorn machine there was it was live uh a situation comedy and uh we had all the players we had about 20 of our players involved in that can i say your age on tv can, am i allowed to say your age uh, you, maybe, maybe not maybe you don't know my age. you've been around he's been around a long time do, do you look back and say man i can't believe we did that or man this is amazing do you, do you still get that amazement about the things that you have accomplished over these decades i don't watch him <laughs> i don't i don't like to watch myself really i don't i don't think about that no i just uh you know whatever we did we did it and uh and I, I just hope that people enjoy it while we were doing it. And hopefully, uh, I, I look. I try to look ahead five years at a time. So uh, this year, I'm, I'm looking five years uh, ahead. And uh, next year, I'll do the same thing again. I, I don't want to go behind me and see what happened behind me. I want to. I want to venture out and find new things to do. And uh, that's the, that's the way we try to live in my house. You've been doing that for a long time. You, when you started the Harlem All Stars, yeah. right after you left the Globe Trotters, and you've been doing that for I mean, twenty five, almost thirty years with the Harlem All Stars. Not pretty much, yeah. 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 So it, uh, it, it but it's it's something that we like to do. It's something that I, I want to do. We we'll we get a chance to see some old friends all across the country, all across the world. One of the young men who uh, went into the Hall of Fame with me at the same time, 
he said uh, he started playing uh, basketball in a little town uh, in Italy when he saw me play as a kid. And he grew up to be seven feet tall. So, uh, you know, and then he wanted to play the pivot because he saw me playing the pivot. So, uh, you know, that's just, when I see stuff like that, you know, it, he kind of smiled about it and just moved right along. I've been doing a lot of reading about your early career in preparation for meeting you and talking to you today. And I, I've seen where you uh, saw, I guess it was the Globetrotters, when you were 11. Yes, that's correct. And that's what inspired you to, to go to work and start getting better and learn how to do what they do and join up with them. And eventually you did in 1955. Yeah, um, after spending, uh, what was it, uh, two years in the armed forces right out of high school, uh, I had a tryout with the Globetrotters uh, um, right after I got out of high school. And uh, I went to college for two weeks and was inducted into the armed forces. Went overseas to Austria for uh, uh, 16 months, 18 months, whatever it was. And uh, uh, when the Globetrotters came to Europe, I had 30 day furlough and I'd take off and I'd go with them for 30 days and then I'd go back to be a soldier again. That's, that's amazing. When you saw them when you were 11, which one of the guys on the Harlem Globetrotters at that time is the one that did it for you, is the one that you admired the most? You said, that's the guy. I want to do what he's doing. That was everybody. Everybody. There's, there's so many great players at the time. Um, when I saw them, they, um, there wasn't no high-fiving and running out on the floor and doing flip-flops or anything. Like, these guys walked out on the floor, but uh, they, had, they were on a mission. And when they hit that, when they hit the basketball court, that's when everything started. You know, when you see a lot of uh, the young people now who are playing sports, they warm up when they get to the floor. And uh, these men, they warmed up in the dressing room. When they hit the floor, they were ready. They didn't have to warm up and stretch and everything else. They stretched before they hit the floor, before... Uh, you know, while they were dre in, uh, putting their uniforms on and before they left the hotels, they were preparing for that game. And uh, when they hit the floor, man, that's when everything happened. And, and it hit me so hard. I didn't even stay in the movie house uh, after I saw a few minutes of them doing what they did. And I went home to learn how to play. And that's, everything started from that. When you signed with them in 1955, yeah. I mean, that's what you were going for. That's what you were aiming for. Did you ever think that moment would come, and how did it feel when you did that? I knew it was coming. Yeah, I didn't have any doubt in my mind. I knew it was going to come, and uh, um, I didn't know the particulars, the thing that you had to prepare for. And that uh, when the, uh, the owner of the team saw me, he told his daughter, he said, that's the one I've been waiting on. And everything started from that point. Did you imagine at that time that you would be with them for the next two and a half decades? No. No, I, uh, I thought I was going to get to go back to college. And uh, one thing led to another. It's almost like LeBron James, you know, people that say, well, why didn't he go to college? Well, he couldn't afford to go to college. <laughs> he... Uh, if he'd gone to college, he'd probably miss three hundred million dollars. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so he could have, he could have bought his own college. Right. Yeah. The guys that were on the team with you, and arguably, you know, that's the that's the team that I grew up, the Harlem Globetrotters that I grew up watching. That's my generation's Globetrotters that you were on. Yes. Those guys that you were on that team with, do you do you stay in touch with those guys? Do you do you have a lot of dealings with them even today? Oh yes. Well, not a. Not everybody. They, it, it, it's like doing a movie. You know, you do a movie with some people and you never see them again. Uh, but a lot of the people that I played with, you know, if you don't keep in touch with them, you know, and everybody are not friends. You know, they work together, but you don't call them your friend. Uh, people like Kurt and Neil, yes, we talk. Marcus Haynes, people like that. Uh, Guy Sosby, I haven't spoken to him in, in a while, and he was really close friend. From right here in Arkansas, Geese was. Yes, he, he's up in Little Rock. He's been up in Little Rock for, he went to college at uh, Philander Smith, I think it was. And uh, he just, 
he, he's a Jesus, he's very subtle, you know, he's a homebody. I like to stay home. And, uh, I'm still roaming all over the country, all over the world. So do you guys get together and have reunions or or uh, well, I, I have do, a shoot around every once in a while? No, I do things. You know, I do some things with Curly. I've done some things with Marcus Haynes because we were really close. Um, other than that, you know, Halle Bryant, uh, Jackie Jackson, I see them every now and then. And people like that, you know, we, we, we talk every now and then. But, you know, uh, people like Curly, we were really, really close. You know, we were like... Nip and tuck, he and I, you know, one day he'd be Robin, the next day he's Batman, so, uh, and that's the way we kind of worked it out. Uh, we were like, we had that charisma type thing going between the two of us. We could uh, not see each other for a couple of years and all of a sudden we come together and it's like we never left each other. So when you left the Globetrotters in the early 80s, not long after that, you put together the team that you have now, the Harlem no, All-Stars. No, no, not the Harlem All-Stars. I put together the Bucketeers. Oh, yeah, the Bucketeers. That's yeah, right. Yeah. And and then later on came the Harlem All-Stars. Yeah. But you you never really stopped playing basketball. No, I never stopped. I mean, you're still playing now. You'll be out there with them I'll, Saturday I'll, afternoon. Saturday, and I'll be out there. I'll play between, uh, I would say, three the three and a half quarters. Do you think there are any other members of the Basketball Hall of Fame that are still playing like you are? N nobody is. Nobody? No. No, I, I, I've been totally blessed in, in uh, what I do. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm on a mission or what, but it's just something that I still enjoy. It's a, it's a type of entertainment for me. Uh, it's a type of entertainment that I hopefully give the people and a lot of the people who miss me because they were so young and now they can come out and, and see what we did and their parents who bring them out can, uh, you know, I, I, I see the fathers and the mothers in the uh, stands telling them, you know, watch this or watch that, watch the water bucket trick, watch, uh, watch him shooting those long hook shots, you know, I told you he was going to do this. Can you still make the half-court hook shot? Well, yeah. Not as uh, frequent as I did it. Uh, he, you never missed back then. It was just every time, automatic. I missed a lot. <laughs> I missed a lot. You know, you know, people get the illusion out there sometimes that you never miss. One, uh, one disc jockey told me, he said, you know, you were so fast you disappeared on the floor one time. I said, yeah, I did. Huh? No. But, you know, people get the illusion sometimes about something that they enjoy doing and, and, and enjoy watching. Uh, and, uh, you know, the people that, uh, the baby boomers that I grew up with, you know, they still bring their kids out, their grandkids out now to see us play. The show that you put on now with the Harlem All-Stars, is that show very similar to the Harlem Globetrotters that you were a part of? Or is there, are, there, are there differences, notable differences in the two shows? Well, I do the things that I made popular. I do the things that I created. Um, they, they don't belong to anybody. Right. And the, whoever can hook it up, that's what they do, and that's what I've done. You know, I don't try to be anybody else but Metal Rock Lemon. Uh, if there's someone out there trying to copy my style, you know, that's up to them. But uh, I, uh, I just do the things that I made popular and the things that I created. Number 36. You've been that number... Long, the whole, long the whole way. What did, did you pick the number? Or did they pick it for you? I can't remember. It goes back so far, but there's a magazine out now that say that you know them by the number. So I'm on a page with Jim Brown, which is, you know, that that's top when you can get on the same page with uh, the greatest or uh, one of the greatest football players of all time. Number thirty-six. That is correct. We're going to take one more break, and when we come back, we're going to uh, have a little bit more with Metal Ark Lemon. He's a busy guy. Lots of places to be and things to do, and we're really lucky to have him right here on YourPrimetimeSports.com. You get big-time savings and hometown service. Always a bit Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram. At
Retirement? It's never looked so good. Welcome to Chateau on the Ridge Assisted Living in Paragould, Arkansas. Say hello to fine dining and down-home living, where around-the-clock security and peace of mind are always at your fingertips. And front row seats to the best shows, they're included. We call it Chateau on the Ridge. You can call it home. Call or visit today to get the whole scoop. Make the switch now to no fee banking. First National Bank provides me with totally free checking and as a business owner that helps keep my customers satisfied. At First National there are no fees and no hassles. Express yourself by choosing a debit card that fits your personality. I switched my bank to First National because of no monthly debit card fees. Are you ready to switch? First National Bank, the working bank for working people. Member FDIC. Let us show you how easy switching can be. Do you need insurance? If the answer is yes, let Chris Robinson and his staff at Chris Robinson's Insurance Agency handle your needs. Whether it's auto, life, business, or planning for your retirement, Chris Robinson's Insurance Agency is ready to serve you and your family. Come by Chris Robinson Insurance Agency, 1211 West Court Street in Paragould. Welcome back to YourPrimetimeSports.com. I'm Dave Grimm, and I am having the thrill of my lifetime getting to interview um, a guy I saw for the first time when I was five years old at Barton Coliseum in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I was probably about four or five rows up, and uh, you were out there doing your thing with the Harlem Globetrotters in 1976. This is Metal Arc Lemon. 2003 inductee in the Basketball Hall of Fame. I, I could go on and on. We could take the whole show listing your accomplishments and accolades, and I wouldn't get to talk to you. And I don't want to do that. I want to talk to you. All right. Um, we were talking about this basketball game. I want to go over this one more time. It's uh, Saturday afternoon, and you're going to play right here in Paragould. Saturday night at 6. Saturday night. I keep saying afternoon. It's Saturday night at 6, and it's at Paragould High School. And it's $15 a ticket. The proceeds are going to Lifehouse Ministries and Center for Fathers and Families. Um, and and you're going to have your all-stars out there doing what you do. Yeah, so we're going to be playing against a lot of the local ministers around town. The, uh, the churches are really, really pushing it. it uh, it's not a church event, uh, but it's a, it's a family event. And it's, uh, uh, it, it's for something that... Uh, really really needed all across the country hopefully lifehouse will uh, expand itself and uh, do a lot of things in other cities because i think it's it's really needed and uh, just in this building that we're in now they got so many things that young ladies and young men need you know they have clothing that in the garage next door they got clothing over there you know that the young people who are stepping out on their own don't have a lot of money but then, too, they, have, uh, they can come to a place like this and get everything they need. The young ladies who don't have uh, a lot of money, they can get their, their needs met for their babies and, uh, you know, even furniture for their babies and clothing for their babies. And, and it's been here a while in Paragool, folks. This is not a new place. It's been here a while. But it's getting probably more attention than it ever has with Metal Arc in town. Oh, and, yeah, we're going to sign your game. Um, I think uh, uh, Sean, she's going to take a break for about a, uh, not from this whole thing, but a break from uh, the fundraising that we're going to do and start on next year. We want to we want to get it uh, put it in a bigger place so we can we can we can help this uh, this group, Life uh, House uh, Ministry, uh, bring in enough money to hopefully last most of the year. And I th because it's needed, it's, it's a needed thing, and it's a worthy thing. So I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it, and, and hopefully I can help them down the line also. Do you think any of these guys on this local team, these ministers or any of these, do they got game? A lot of them have. Really? Uh, yes, a lot of them. A lot of them can play, you know. Uh, um, I did a research uh, several years ago about uh, uh, men in the ministry, women in the ministry. Most of them are good athletes. Uh, most of them, um, I, I, I had uh, two priests years ago, who were very, very close friends of mine, who were drafted by uh, the Dodgers and, and, and the Giants baseball teams. 
so that's how that's the kind of athletes they are. Sure. Well, and if you had it to choose over again, you'd still pick basketball. But what other sport do you like the most that you could have played, maybe both at the same time, or or would have liked to have played at one point or another? It would be football than basketball. Football. Yeah. I, I can see you as a football player. I can see you. Uh, probably as a running back. No, I was a receiver. You were a receiver? I was a receiver. I was a defensive back and a defensive end. So that's what you would what you would have wanted to yes. pursue if you'd stay with football. Yes. That's yes. I, I can uh, I can see you playing football. Yeah, I could have been a receiver. I was pretty quick, pretty fast and uh, uh and I, I enjoyed the contact because, you know, when you're young like that, you, you think you can run through a brick wall. And later on in life, you wish you hadn't played. Uh, a lot of my friends who play football professionally, oh, man, their bodies are beat up pretty good. Uh, so, but you don't, near, you don't have near that problem with the game of basketball. Yes, a lot of the basketball players, the pounding that they get running up and down the floor. But you personally, are you? I'm, I'm in good shape. You're in I'm, good shape. I, I, I've been blessed. I've been really blessed. and uh, Well, I mean, you're still doing it. Yes. You're still doing it today. Yes, and, um, oh, man, it, it, it's good. Uh, my wife, she, she's a naturopathic doctor, so she helps me. She keeps me in shape, keeps me eating the right food. Well, now, wait a minute. Did you marry her for that reason? <laughs> Did you marry no. her so she could keep you alive and keep you around a little while longer? No, she's doing a good job of it, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 uh, no, we didn't get married because I of know. that. We got married because of something else. We, we just fell in love with each other. We, How long have you guys been married? Over 20 years. 20 years? Yes. Well, I'm so glad you were able to uh, be on with us on your primetimesports.com. And you're, uh, you, this is not your first trip here. You were here earlier this year. Yes. I'm sure you'll be back. We're, we're so glad to have you in Paragool. Yeah, I, I'm going to be coming back several times a year because I'll be speaking in, in – with certain organizations and uh, different churches in the area. So I'll be coming in and out of here quite a bit over the next hundred years. They don't get any more legendary than this. Metal Art Lemon, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you. And uh, everybody under the sound of our voices, I'll see you Saturday night at the basketball game. All right. We'll be right back. Metal Art Lemon, thank you so much. Thank I'm you. Dave Grimm. We'll be right back on yourprimetimesports.com.